In the annals of superhero television, there exists a captivating yet exclusive character that remains shrouded in obscurity. The 2011 Wonder Woman series, a promising venture meticulously crafted by Warner Brothers, Television, and DC Entertainment for NBC. The series had all the elements to sort of greatness, penned by the esteemed David E. Kelly, and skillfully directed by Jeffrey Reiner. The stage was set for Wonder Woman to grace our screens once more. The central figure of this grand narrative was to be brought to life by the talented Adrian Palicki. Stepping into the iconic role of Wonder Woman herself, the anticipation was palpable. Fans eager to witness her don the tiara embrace the legendary lasso. However, fate had different plans and the project was never meant to see the light of day. As NBC chose not to greenlight the full series, we examined the essence of Paliki's portrayal and the expectations that swirled around her as the beloved Amazonian warrior. Moreover, we delved into Pedro Pascal's serendipitous transformation from an unaired pilot to a starring role in a blockbuster film, marking his indelible imprint on the legacy of Wonder Woman. <laughs> I'm a forgiving man! <laughs> in a bustling inner city home, a teenager excitedly shares the news of his college acceptance with his family, only to suffer a sudden, mysterious convulsion bleeding from his eyes and ears. Meanwhile, on the vibrant streets of Hollywood Boulevard, Wonder Woman engages in a high-speed pursuit of a super-strength criminal. After subduing the culprit, she collects a blood sample for further investigation. As the CEO of the Mascara Industries, a corporation that houses both her crime-fighting persona as Wonder Woman and her public image as role model Diana the Mascara, grapples with the challenging task of balancing her dual life. Frustrated by the constant pressure to maintain a flawless facade in both roles, she decides to create a third identity, Diana Prince. Seeking a semblance of normalcy by enjoying simple pleasures like watching romantic comedies and browsing the internet alongside her feline companion. However, her life takes a dramatic turn when Diana grows suspicious of the wicked businesswoman, Veronica Kale, for distributing an illegal performance enhancing drug. The drug grants superhuman strength and endurance, but poses deadly risks with repeated use. Her doubts confirmed by the blood sample and the tragic fate of the college-bound teen, Diana faces a moral dilemma, lacking concrete evidence to confront Kale as Wonder Woman. She boldly exposes her beliefs during a press conference, hoping to shine a light on the villainous activities. Kale, in a confrontational encounter, tries to intimidate Diana and threatens legal repercussions through a poignant flashback. It is revealed that Diana had to part ways with her boyfriend, Steve Trevor, due to the demands of her busy life. Present-day tragedy of the teenager's death propels Diana to confront Kale directly as Wonder Woman. In a thrilling display of strength, she defeats Kale's super-powered henchmen and confronts the malevolent businesswoman face-to-face. -face. Did you actually come here to threaten me in some way? by threatening to release security footage of Wonder Woman's actions. Unfazed, Diana skillfully employs her lasso of truth, bringing Kale to her knees and rendering her powerless. Subsequently, Kale faces imprisonment and a representative from the Justice Department arrives to meet Diana. To her astonishment, the representative is none other than her former love, Steve Trevor, who reveals that he is now married to someone else. In this thrilling tale of deception, resilience, and redemption, Take care, Willis. Wonder Woman's unwavering commitment to justice and truth prevails, but not without personal sacrifice and unexpected twists along the way. The story encapsulates the complex nature of Wonder Woman's existence as both the powerful superhero and a relatable human with struggles of her own. Tonight, I am building my Facebook page. Adrian Palicki was selected to take on the title role of Wonder Woman and her costume garnered significant attention. Unlike Linda Carter's patriotic outfit, Palicki's costume emphasized the character's Greek mythological origin, which received mixed reactions from fans and critics. Warner Brothers later made changes to the costume due to fan criticism, but interestingly, the original version appeared in another TV show episode. Uh, maybe a raccoon had got into the kitchen through the doggy door, but it was no raccoon. It was a woman dressed in a costume. After viewing the pilot, television critic Alan Seffenwall expressed strong disapproval calling it embarrassing and confirming his initial concerns were justified. Neil Calloway, writing for Flickering Myth, acknowledged that the show had its moments but believed it felt outdated for 2011, concluding that its cancellation didn't result in any significant loss. You know, I, I, got, to, I got paid to wear the costume. 
but I will tell you there was there was about a dark five years where it was really like that was that was a hard one to to come back from because I loved doing that but in an interview with the Hollywood Reporter the series creator David E. Kelly admitted to making mistakes but expressed the desire to have another chance to rectify them he believed they had several strong aspects as a talented cast and given the opportunity they could have addressed the issues and improved the show in 2020, Adrienne Palicki shared her feelings of devastation when the series was not picked up. She believed that if the show had been given a chance one or two years later, it could have found great success. Similarly, Pedro Pascal expressed his own disappointment, describing the project as risky and interesting, and showing admiration for the efforts of Adrienne Palicki and David E. Kelly in their unique take on the Wonder Woman story. Unfortunately, NBC decided not to proceed with the series. In May of the same year, while the pilot never officially aired, it was briefly leaked on YouTube before being taken down. It can now be found on the internet archive for those interested in exploring this lost chapter in Wonder Woman's television history.